Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games and day 30 of the challenge. And now this is the final day of the challenge. So really happy to get to day 30 and really happy to get the shell of the fang finally painted. So this is where I left it yesterday. I had a coat of that garage floor paint. I also painted all of these pieces that are going to go on the battlefield as terrain. But I was quite heavy handed with the amount of paint I put on these and when I turned them over today it hadn't dried so it's going to take another 14 to 16 hours for the bottoms to dry properly so I didn't do those today but I'm going to look at this as a positive I'm going to do some battle damage on the walled structures of these parts I think that's going to give them a lot more character they're a bit too crisp as they are so I think it's a good thing really because otherwise I would have gone ahead and just finished painting them today but the main construction was completely dry, so I got to work on painting that. And so the first thing I was going to do was the rocks. And for that, I used some of this Dulux paint. And this is timeless, so it's just an off-white, but bright enough to do the job. And so what I did is just took it straight out of the pot and mixed it in a little bit of water just to water it down a bit. And so I wanted to see some of that grey coming through. So I just mixed those two together, and then that was quite watery, a little bit thicker than milk, almost like a double cream. Now just paint that over every piece that's going to be the rock and then yeah some of that grey is going to come through as it dries and this is the same technique I used on the weapons and the claws for the actual models themselves. So there you can see it all the rock is painted now. I also wanted to paint the ground so for that I just used the same paint with the same water down I just started to like stipple it on and just build up the layers and I wanted to have it so that you could imagine vehicles coming through there so they would leave like tracks so it wouldn't be as white where the vehicles come through so just build up layers of that white and then I'm going to go some other colours later on but this is the effect really and then just streak in some lines just to represent the tracks of the vehicles as they've gone through the tunnels. And that's the first stage of that process done and I just continued doing that for the rest of the ground went a bit heavier over towards the rocks because that's going to be like more where the snow would build up if you like or the ice would be at its thickest and here there wouldn't be as much ice going inside either and then I did the same technique on the top of the bridge next step I grabbed some black paint and some blue and these are both like acrylic hobby paints and just did a mixture almost like equal quantities of the black and the blue and a little bit of water in there as well and so give that a good mix up and then that's going to go over all of the brickwork of the building so I'm just doing a really rough coat all over I'm not like spreading proper amounts of paint on almost like an overbrush and so just going over the whole building and there you go it's almost like a dark reaper color if you want to match it to a color from Citadel and so that was really changing up those color schemes there but I didn't paint the little barriers that you can see, they're going to be a totally different colour, which I'll do later on. Then I took some teal coloured acrylic paint and then I just added some water to that so it'd be a little bit see-through. And then I went over all the rocks with one coat and just nice and thin with that. Then I add a bit more water to it and make it really thin now. And then I go over the ground as well. And you can see that Dulux paint is almost causing it quite some difficulty to get it to stick. But I just kept brushing it and then it managed to stick in the end. So this is going to make it look nice and icy now. And again, just going over the top of the bridge and all the other sections. It looks quite cool in this black and turquoise colour. But I kept going with other layers. And now I added some more blue to that black and blue mixture. And then this is going to make it more like a Thunderhawk blue colour. And then I just go over all the building just roughly now, just giving it one like thin coat. And it's very scruffy. I wasn't being neat or tidy here. And it's just going to add a little bit of a different colour to having it that standard grey. Then back to the rocks, this time with that blue and then watering that down very thin. And then I just dapple it on in different areas. I'm not giving it a complete coat. As you can see, it's just like speckled around. That's just going to mix things up a little bit and give a really nice colour. It's quite subtle, but I think the effect in the end is going to be quite good. And again, this is exactly how I did the weapons and the claws on the miniatures. And I did the same thing on the ground here, just dappled it on and on top of the bridge too. I thought I'd just add a little bits of colour here and there. So I took some Screamer pink base paint and just painted these straight lines that go down in the different sections and so it's just to mix it up a little bit so that it's not all completely grey and then once I've done that 
I took some Avaland Sunset and again just picking out little spots just to give them a little bit of colour. And this is going to be like a temporary thing. I can imagine taking all these shapes off and putting more details on there for sure. But this will definitely do for now. Then I took some rust grey and painted in all those barriers around the gun placements and so that's just going to tie in with the colours of the models a little bit. Then went back to that timeless paint and then did some dry brushing. And so here I just go over the heavily dry brushing the rocks and then almost doing like an overbrush and then a drier brush as I get more and more of that white on there and just building it up in layers. Lots and lots of layers. So this took quite a long time. This was the biggest a uh, whole stage of this whole painting process and then I start going over lightly the whole building and then I kept going with loads and loads of layers of dry brushing until I got to this stage and that's where I decided to stop and this is as far as I'm going to get in this 30 days for the 30 day challenge and I think I'm happy with the progress made I've got the army painted I've got a display for them all to go in to keep them safe and I think just to put them on the front as a display is going to be pretty fun too I'm happy with how the ice and frozen rocks turned out, but there's definitely a lot of work to do on this. I'm going to look to take off all those shapes and add a lot of detail into the walls and make it look a lot better than this. But that's something I can do later on. I think for now, just to have it ready that I can use it is a good step. And those gun placements are cool as well, because now I can put all the models on them so I can actually display them from the front or I can put them around the back in the separate rooms. But all those rooms at the back are going to have um, different elements built in them so they're all going to be like done in the future so there's no rush to get that done but I think it's going to be fun to make videos for each room as I kit it out but my next job will be to get that scatter terrain done and just follow these same steps to get all those ready for the tabletop so I think this is a good way to end the challenge uh, we're at day 30 I've got the army done I've got the building done so really happy with that and yeah, loads more to do though. Now I've got to make all the videos for all the different things I've painted. I'll also do a video where I do a showcase going through the army. I'll do something where I reflect on the whole army build, what I liked, what I didn't like, what I did right, what I did wrong, that kind of thing. I might do a Q&A as well if anyone's interested. Add some um, questions you might have down in the comments below and I might do a video to answer all that. That'd be quite fun. So although the challenge is finished, I think there's still a lot of videos to come out, a lot of content for the Space Wolves to come. And then once I've got the terrain ready, I can start doing the How to Play Warhammer 40,000 rule series, which I'm really excited about. Thank you so much for following along with this 30 day series. It's been a real marathon and I'm really happy to get to the end of it. And now I can chill out a little bit and actually start playing with them, which I think is going to be great fun. But thanks so much again. I really appreciate all your comments along the way, spurring me on and giving me the motivation I needed to get to the end. I look forward to seeing you for the next videos I put out for the Space Wolves and also later on today when I do the Warhammer Sunday preview video. I can't wait to see what new products are going to be available to pre-order for next week. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this and don't forget to hit that notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make these daily videos possible. And if you're interested in joining the community, it'd be awesome to see you there. And I'll put a link for that in the description down below. <laughs>